What does this mean to you, this, uh, this tattoo? Freedom. I'm not part of the system anymore. For me, it just stands for a huge change in my life because of Bitcoin. This is Didi Taihutu. Today, he isn't just inking his forearm with his favorite currency, he's branding himself with the symbol of what he sees as a movement. Last fall, when Didi got the tattoo, we were in the middle of the Bitcoin frenzy. Bitcoin was everywhere, and Didi and many others were convinced that a financial revolution is not just inevitable, but that it was already there. Bitcoin. 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 At the time, Bitcoin seemed unstoppable, hitting new highs almost weekly. A bunch of Bitcoin enthusiasts went all in and tied their fate to Bitcoins. Didi is one of them. One of the most beautiful beaches in Koza Moy. But what happens when a currency you have bet everything on starts to crash? Yeah, we lost more than 500k. Officially, we don't live in the Netherlands. We are registered in Holland as um, homeless people. In the summer of 2017, Didi Taihutu decided to radically change his and his family's life. He wanted to downsize and live a minimalistic lifestyle with few possessions. The vehicle to finance this new life, he decided, would be cryptocurrencies. Taihutu sold almost all of his possessions and invested that money in Bitcoin. I can buy Lamborghinis with crypto, I can buy houses with crypto, I can buy groceries with crypto, I can buy my pizza with crypto. Didi began buying most of his bitcoins when the price was around $1,000 in February last year. He continued to put money in up until that November. Around the same time, bitcoin had skyrocketed to nearly $10,000. But why would someone sell all their possessions, invest everything in bitcoin and move into a trailer park? This promo video for Didi's old company might be a clue. Didi used to run a private institute teaching folks basic software applications. I spent 10 years of my life I spent in this building. <laughs> Do you feel liberated? Yeah, of course. I realized that it wasn't life. So this was my old company. This is the house I used to live in. Do you miss it? No, not at all. Not at no, all. not at all. Look at the space. Hi. 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 I'm Tom. Hi. Do you know what DDE did? Yeah, of yeah. course we know what DDE did. Yeah. I think all family knows what DDE did. I work at the bank. She works oh. at the bank. Are you tempted? No. No? No. Why not? If because it's smart. I don't want to take the risk. For him, it was a good choice at the moment. After Didi sold his old house, he wanted to minimalize his family's lifestyle and move them into this small bungalow in a trailer park about 20 miles away. So tell me a little bit about what it's like living here. As you can see, it's beautiful. I'm living in the middle of nature. Yeah, we have everything for the kids around here. So we have a playground. So would you say this has brought you closer together as a family? Yeah, much closer. What's your worth now? <laughs> I don't exactly know, but I believe I will be a millionaire before me. We kept pressing him on how much money he exactly invested and how many Bitcoins he bought but he kept evading our questions. He told us he was in it for the long run. So even as the price reached $19,000 when we met him last December, he was still not selling his Bitcoins. I really think crypto money will be the new money. Just make yourself at home. Mi casa es su casa. It's pretty, it's pretty cozy here, it's nice. How are the kids settling into the new regime? They're selling in good, I think. Do you miss the house? I prefer this. It's small, it's cozy, it's easy to clean because we're in the woods. Peaceful. It's not just Bitcoin, it's just the way of life we want to live right now. When I first met with Didi, his decision seemed reckless. It is one thing to gamble on your future, but to do so with that of your wife and three children seemed a bit much. It turns out there was another reason for Didi to sell most of his possessions and leave his old life behind. It started with a call from his dad four years ago. So I was driving the car with my wife and he called me and he was like, Didi, I just uh, came back from the hospital and um, there is just one, uh, there is just one year for me. So at that point, you realize life can go very fast. As Didi tells it, his dad 
while a good father was a workaholic fixated on making money. Didi inherited that same intense work ethic. The last year he left, he changed. He understood my decision because he, he knew that I saw that it could go very fast. Didi's father died at age 61. The goal is just living a very happy minimalistic lifestyle and showing my children this style of living and that we can be very happy with it. The media also took note of Didi's radical decision. So since we took this step of selling everything for Bitcoin, we are receiving mails from a lot of people all over the world. They're all telling me the same. You inspired me to change my life. And then Didi showed me the latest fan mail he had received. And then, then Didi turns into this one. <laughs> what do you think about that? It's totally saying what I did. I changed from a suit working to just a free guy. I still don't feel a superhero. But <laughs> <laughs> Didi might not feel like a superhero, but he certainly has become one for his fans and followers. He adds fans and money by giving public presentations about Bitcoin. I say Bitcoin, blockchain, it will the world change. Yeah, we are begonnen with one of these stains to share. That is on a given a great moment. Well, thank you for listening. Didi's radical investment strategy has clearly made him a darling with this crowd. But amidst all this talk of investing in Bitcoin, there was no mention of the elephant in the room, the bubble. If you think the Dow had a bad day, Bitcoin's was worse. Bitcoin taking a beating, breaking below 6,000. About a month after we left DD, Bitcoin started crashing. It had lost about two thirds of its value since the December high. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, man. How are you? Hey, this is the swimming pool. This is the view. Looks, looks really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really cheap as well. We were surprised to find him in Thailand in good spirits. One of the most beautiful beaches in Koh Samui. Didi and his family have been living in a beachside hostel for the past four months. Uh, when we left Holland, the price of Bitcoin was going to the, the highest it's been, and you, you were convinced it was going to 25K, but then it dropped. There's a shock a little bit. Okay, wow, this is a 50% drop. This one is huge. But then we are in it for the long term. So in our opinion, we will reach a new all-time high this year. You know, when, when it was at its peak, how much do you think you've lost since then? 60%, but we still have the same amount of Bitcoins. A ballpark figure. This is fishing. Fishing. <laughs> yeah, it might no, be fishing, it's yes. A, a, ball, a ballpark picture. Yeah, we lost more than 500k. For me, in the long term, Bitcoin is going to be huge. It is. It, there is no possibility it isn't. Since April, Bitcoin has gone up and down and is now valued around the $6,400 mark. We spoke with cryptocurrency experts and none of them believe that Bitcoin's value will increase significantly in the near future. So where's Didi and his family now? After a few months in Thailand, Didi's family decided to go all in with the idea of the Bitcoin family as a brand. They got an RV sponsored by a Bitcoin company. Last five and a half months, we traveled to all Europe. Um, had one big adventure and discovered how Bitcoin was doing in all those countries. And we did it in a very small space. So it had, it had its ups and downs. So the kids, are they going to school? So they're not going to school. But aren't you depriving your kids from an education? There is not a structure in, a, in their life and in schooling, because we still think that the normal schools prepare the kids for the past. So we prepare them for a decentralized future. Officially, we don't live in the Netherlands. Officially, so you don't? No, officially we are we are registered in Holland as um, homeless people. You're registered as homeless people. Didi told us his family is doing this to evade the Dutch authorities from going after them for taking their kids out of school. When we spoke on Skype, you said that Bitcoin was going to be 20k by the end of this year. Do you yeah. still think that's going to happen? I, I still think it's going to end between 15 and 20k this year. But like, do you have another end game in mind with where you're going with all the Bitcoin family stuff or the sponsorship or the advisory, anything like that? No, not really. Uh, we don't have an end game. We don't have an exit game. We don't have an exit plan. We don't have anything. My goal wasn't to become a millionaire. My goal was to change life. Uh, I changed this life. I achieved um, this change in my life and I'm very happy with it.